So tonight we are in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, right across the street from the venue. Beautiful little tribute. across the river over there. It's a sculpture of folded American flag. Got the stadium right behind us here. Four more shows, we get to go home on Monday. Can't wait to see Maureen, the puppies, drive again, start sorting out, getting the truck repaired, <laughs> all this stuff, hitting the ground. So here we are at American Outfitters Stage AE is the venue tonight. Got some rules here. We'll call. they're sitting tonight and not standing again I really feel bad for people it's one thing if you're 20 at a rave a whole other thing when you have people in 50 60 70s and they're standing in a hot building for three hours table. Here's some more of my books. 
Looks like I'm going to be done with books when this tour ends. I'll have to ship out another pallet's worth when we start up again. Let's see what's going on out here. had somebody write to me going, how come you film you walking up and down stairs and down hallways? Really? I mean, really? I wrote back and said, this is how I show the places. You gotta get from one place to the next and that's how you do it, through hallways and up and down stairs and you make discoveries. A storage room. There's our buses and trucks out here. Stadium over there. Upcoming shows. I could hear you outside. You could hear me outside. I mean, not loud, but I mean, I, I knew you found a place in this area. Really? Yeah. That's cool. I mean, it's not cool. It's a little warm in here. It's warm in here. I'm about to get out of here. Yeah. How are you doing today? I'm okay. Just counting down. I mean, once, once we hear a band on stage, you know, the juices kick in. Until then, it's like... Yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> yeah, just dealing with life. Nice little war memorial over there. Yeah, I like coming to this. This room. This room, you get the skill out and stuff. Yeah, I saw you over there walking. Yeah, I like the funicular right over there across the way going up to the top. Oh, yeah. It was always weird. I remember going to the Vietnam Memorial. We had played in Washington, dead of winter. It was probably 15 below zero, totally snowed in. And I came out of the gig and I thought, I'm wide awake. I think I'm going to walk the mall. Oh, I was the, on, the only other person on the mall was one of those guys with those hot dog stands, which is steam oh, yeah. pouring off of it. And I went to the memorial. And I found, I had a number of friends in high school who all got killed in Vietnam. So oh. I found their names in the oh, books really? and went around and was able to dust off their names on the wow. wall. And it was just, you know, you're sitting there reflecting about what your life has been since then and that theirs ended at that moment and what they could have been. And then you find that it was just all deception and lies and all that. Really yeah, that's hard. pretty heavy, especially, I mean, you were... I was in the middle of that. In the middle of it. Yeah. So how, how was it, how were you able not to have been drafted? Um, I had a couple of allergies. I was, I'm allergic to, to detergent and I'm allergic to wool. Oh, so really? if I put on a uniform, I would look like a Slim Jim oh, really? really fast. So I, I had a dermatologist who I went to, uh -huh. and uh, it turned out that she was a absolute war hawk. She totally believed in it, but it was her obligation, since I was one of her patients, to write me a letter. And she wrote the barest minimum letter she could possibly write to the draft board to say my condition. And then one day I get, get home and I got a thing from the, from the military. It looked exactly like the things you would get when you're told to report for your physical. Oh, and wow. uh, I opened it up and it said you have a 4F. Oh, um, and so 4F means, 4F means you're exempt. Oh, wow. And because I was writing my, my college 
um, philosophy teacher was my draft counselor. I mean, I would have gone to Canada or something because yeah. I absolutely did not believe in that war and the way it was being handled. It was just yeah. a horrible time in our history and uh, lost so many friends over there for not, you know, because then a decade later, suddenly all the truth starts coming out right. about all the lies and deception. So it's just, it was a dark time, but, you know, we're, we're so, we, were, we were about to enter into another dark time here, but it looks like there might be a light at the end of the tunnel now. So fingers are crossed. Well, let's see. Let's hope so. Let's hope so. I'm, let's I've hope got, so. all I did yesterday was I posted a blue background and it just said, vote blue. The vehemence I'm getting now from that yeah. of people that, just going, and once again, it's all the ones that we love your bass playing to shut the fuck up about politics. You're, you're, you're not qualified. But to them, you know, having a game show host is qualified. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, it's, it's stepping into it. But first and foremost, I mean, I was really active during Vietnam and stuff. I've been a political activist my whole life. And I'm not about to change that, especially in pivotal times now, especially when I start thinking about family and nieces and what the women are going through in the, in this current state it's yeah, so there's, broken there's, it's so broken a lot of stuff but there's an energy now that means that there's a chance that this can all be turned around and we can get back on track and then deal with the real issues we have to deal with you know so here's hoping it's always good to see you brad you too, bro. okay i'll see you, you a lot of bit. stuff on your mind today lots lots of <laughs> You got it. Sorry for that rant, but I'm not sorry, but. Oh, cool. Cool little office in here. This is a media room, it said. So what else we got up here? A mechanical room. Oh, that one is locked. So this is the gig. Hi, Emily. Boardroom. And Russ Kunkel was born in Pittsburgh, so we are in his hometown. Hi, baby. How are you? Honey? I'm completely fine. I'm out just wandering. Yes, this I'll is let wonderful. you. We've got air conditioning. I know. Thank God. Thank God they moved it indoors. It was supposed to be outdoors. I'm lost, but Lee's gonna help me get found. I'm going right there. Right? To the left. Perfect. Thank you. Giant. 
and straws. This is where we were going to be playing. But I think due to heat and weather and everything, they decided to pull it in, which is, I always enjoy these venues that are back to back, where you have indoor, outdoor, and it's just a wall dividing the two, so you can go either direction with them. I think the last time we were here, we played here. might actually have been here with Nora opening uh, or the next night after I came here and saw Nora Jones. Okay, there's the stadium right here. Yeah. Yeah, maybe a break. The south side of Chicago has always had a special place in my heart. Give me a rush. The fabulous mace. Lyle Zeal. skill set and yeah. the connections, I would be a good manager for him. Except he doesn't have the skill set or any connections. So he could be your current manager. <laughs> oh, he is. Oh, okay, he cool. Just, you guys make such a beautiful team. He forgets he's James Hera, James Hera. Hi. How are you? Enjoy these bad movies, obviously. Oh, I 
You want to get this on film? You want my? Yeah, absolutely. Show everybody the, the well, reality. You can't show the signatures. No, you, 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 you can't. Here, I'll, I'll cover up these other signatures. Okay. You do yours right there. I am right here? Yeah. <laughs> me, and, me and Jethro. Right. This is the only real money you ever see on a tour. Great job Everything. on the entire tour. The, I can't tell you, man. I, I'm so glad I stuck it out this long. <laughs> oh, can I add a name for the Indianapolis? Yeah. Uh, his name is, I'll wait for you to get it. Yeah, go ahead. Jeff, J E F F, G E R S O N, Gerson. Two tickets and after show. Yeah. That'll be it, my last request. Sad day, Lee. That's Sunday. No, it's a sad day. Is it Saturday? No, it's sad day. Oh, sa oh no. That's your last request. Well, you know, there's an aspect to this that... <laughs> All right, buddy. See okay, I'll see you in a bit. By the way, everybody, if it wasn't for Jay Wright, this he is the engine that drives this entire oh. machine right off the tracks every That's day. Right off the tracks. <laughs> see you in a bit. Uh, the trucks. Oh, hello. I'm just documenting the venue for our and uh, this is our nice little hidey hole office. I think you have it made back here. I'm not going to tell anybody you're here. This is a beautiful thing you've got. We'll see you later. Piano case. That's about it. So have a great rest of your day. We're gonna get ready for sound check, showtime, bus ride. That's our routine. So talk to you later.